shake your hand. Oh, sure. Herbie Grant. Who's Herbie Grant, Mom? Who I went to school with. Let's see here. In as much as most of my financial interests are centered in Europe, I have spent the intervening years on the continent. However, business negotiations require me to be in Hooterville, and I'm looking forward to reminiscing with you. Mm, expensive stationery. That guy is a phony. <laughs> you don't even know the man. Kate. You only buy expensive stationery like this when you're about to go bankrupt. <laughs> Guy's a phony. Who is he, Mom? Well, he was a senior in high school when I was a freshman. Oh, I had such a crush on him. I used to take the long way to algebra just so I could pass him in the hall. Gee, I wish we hadn't picked this time to visit Aunt Winifred in Groverdale. Yeah, we're going to miss all the fun. Well, I'm not, if I can help it. <laughs> Maybe we ought to postpone no, our trip. Oh, no, you don't. You picked the time to go see Aunt Winnie. I didn't. And you're not going to disappoint that sweet, lonely woman. But, Mom, we could stay here and we could help you and we could... Oh, come on, girls. Get going. Bye, Mom. Bye, Uncle Joe. Bye, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye, Uncle Joe. Bye, Orville. Bye, Uncle Joe. Okay, bye, Orville. We'll miss you. Don't work too hard. Bye, Mom. You kissed for me. We will. Bye-bye. Take care, you hear? Okay. Bye-bye. Gee, Mr. Carson, I have no place to move. Sure you have. You can jump me right there, Orville. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> What'd you do that to me for, Mr. Carson? Well, that's one of life's lessons, son. Never be too quick to trust anybody. Not even the most honest guy alive. Me. <laughs> Hi, Georgette. This is Mr. Grant. How are things in France? Oh, Monsieur Grant, we were so worried. We had not heard from you for 24 hours. Where are you? Hooterville. I'm going to be here for a week. I don't want to be disturbed. Oh, well, Monsieur Grant, Madagascar wants to know if they can go ahead with the dam. Buenos Aires would like a $5 million loan. Anderson called from Nairobi. They discovered oil in your diamond mine. Should they go on digging? <laughs> and Ethiopia wants to know about the pipeline. All right. Yes on one and three. No on two and four. Anything else? Okay. So long. <laughs> I'm Herb Grant. Carson, my name. The house dick at the Shady Rest Hotel. Oh. Oh, things haven't changed much around here, have they? Crime prevention-wise, they have. We're plugged right into the FBI, CIA, Scotland Yard. We get bulletins on card sharks, con men, everybody. Maybe you better get back on the train. <laughs> the hotel is this way, isn't it? Oh, yes, sir. I'll take your bag for you. No, thanks. I'll carry it. <laughs> Phony. Carrying his own bags to avoid paying a tip, which he can't afford. Now. Dress is pretty good. Remember, you can rent anything. Yeah, but suppose he really is a millionaire. Millionaire? Where's his spats, his top hat, his diamond stick pin? He's a millionaire, he's out of uniform. He looks sort of refined to me. Forget it. Them city haircuts will fool you every time. Well, we better keep an eye on him. Kate? I mean, H.G.? Uh, rather, Mr. Grant. <laughs> it's still Herbie to you. It's still Kate to you, Herbie. Well, you sure look, um, nice, I guess. And you look nice too, Kate, and I'm not guessing. Well, thank you. Welcome home. Thanks, Kate. It's nice to be home. Home. 
That's one word he can start eliminating from his vocabulary. Start with the next train out of here. <laughs> Watch this. Grant. Oh, hi there. Mr. Grant? After you get rested, how about a little poker? You don't mind playing with a fella who don't know an ace from a deuce? Thanks, but I never played cards in my life. <laughs> oh, how about a little crap shooting out behind the barn? No, I never gamble on games of chance. You don't, huh? <laughs> well, I'll try to think up something you'll find entertaining. Thanks, but I'm getting along fine. You know, a fellow could do a lot worse than settling down right here. I've got it now. His gimmick's gigolo. He'll take Kate for every last desperate cent she's got, then break her heart. Yeah, but I thought Mrs. Bradley didn't have much money. You got a point there. Well, maybe gigolos are having a desperate year, too. Besides, I think this guy's on how much this hotel's worth. Well, how much is it worth? I haven't the least idea. You know, I feel very proud knowing that a fella from Hooterville has done as well as you've done. Tell me, did you ever get married? No, Kate, I never got married. Never got married? Please, you make it sound like a capital crime. Well, I don't mean to. It's just that it... It seems strange that in your travels that you didn't meet some girls. Oh, I met girls, but uh, after you move around from one place to another, why, well, you, you certainly meet girls. The trouble is, Kate, they're girls, not women. I think that's why I had to come back, Kate, to recapture something. I think the time has come for us to get better acquainted. Sounds like a nice idea, Herbie. This ain't no penny any crook. Mark my words, this guy's after Kate, the hotel, and everything. I gotta get rid of him and fast. Good thick coat of paint and cover up a multitude of sins, as they say. It's like Kate, bless her heart, loading on all that makeup every morning. Oh, she doesn't look like she can buy us any. Now, don't get me wrong. Kate's a fine little woman, bless her heart. She needs some dental work. I'd probably stand to have her appendix removed if she could afford it. But she'll marry some sucker or some fellow one of these days and get what she needs, bless her heart. Uncle Joe, here's some more coffee, bless his heart, for your dear little cup, bless his heart. Now you drink it up while it's good and hot, bless its heart. Excuse me. you to stop all this nonsense with Herbie, and I especially want you to stop it tonight around supper time. Why tonight? Because Herbie asked if we could eat by candlelight. It's his favorite way of enjoying a meal. I get the picture. Just the two of you, with him moving closer with every mouthful. Forget it. I ain't letting you out of my sight. <laughs> crook in there getting set to move in for the kill tonight. Kirsch, I guess I'm too young to know a criminal when I see one, but Mr. Grant doesn't look like one to me. That's what makes him so deadly. But I done a little snooping in his room. Did you ever hear of a millionaire with no monogram on his pajamas? Kirsch, I guess not. Or a millionaire with a pair of shoes with a hole in the sole? Golly, no. Or a millionaire that never seems to have any pocket change? Boy, I think you got him pegged right at that, Mr. Carson. A smart man. I gotta throw a monkey wrench in this guy's plans before the girls come back and find the hotel gone. And before he breaks Kate's heart to boot. Oh, come on, Mr. Carson. Tell me what your plan is, huh? Well, this guy's got more than one angle, so we gotta hit him with more than one plan. Yeah, well, like what, Mr. Carson? Like what? Like the plan that's coming along right now. Old man hungry Mabel Snark. Hi, Joe. Orville. Hiya, Mabel. Afternoon, Mabel. You old heartbreaker, you. Heartbreaker? Now, what is that supposed to mean? Now, don't kid me, Mabel. Over at the Shady Rest, all you hear is Mabel that doll, Mabel that dreamboat, Mabel that gorgeous hunk of woman. <laughs> Who's been saying that? And please tell me it was a man. It was a man, all right, and what a man. Well, uh, who is he? Is he single or anything? 
is single in everything. Handsome, debonair, gay, man about town. Well, who, for heaven's sakes, who is this loving doll? Well, he's a feller staying at the Shady Rest. Well, what's his name? Well, for the time being, we'll just call him Mr. X. Well, why hasn't he looked me up before? I'm not hard to reach in Hooterville. Believe me, I am not hard to reach. Well, he's a mite shy. Well, he shouldn't be. Not with me. Why don't you come on over to Shady Rest and get acquainted? Uh, well, Joe, uh, how do you think this would hit him? Right between his baby blue eyes. Handsome, dashing, debonair, with baby blue eyes? Ooh, that's enough to make a girl flip her lid. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? But save your lid flip until you meet him in person at the Shady Rest tonight. I'll be there. Baby blue eyes. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Carson, but do you think she's competition for Mrs. Bradley? Not competition, boy. Confusion. <laughs> What are you up to now, Mr. Carson? Plan number two, Orville, my boy. Insurance. You got change for five? Heck no. Let me have a dime, will you? <laughs> Don't worry about your dime, Orville. You'll get it back, every penny of it. I will? In the form of satisfaction. <laughs> oh, great. Hello, Sheriff Ragsdale. Carson here. Reporting the whereabouts of a joker, I figure he's got to be the most wanted con man in the country. Yeah, I'll be at the Shady Rest tonight. Just doing my duty as a public-spirited citizen. Well, naturally, if there's a reward, we'll split it. Where magazines to burn, Orville? Hey! Look what I found in one of the magazines. Yeah. Mr. Carson, it's a picture of Mr. Grant. Grant? I knew it. Let's see what he wanted for. H.J. Grant is pictured above under armed escort. I knew he was a crook. I never miss. Keep reading, Mr. Carson. Under armed escort, as he carried part of his famous diamond collection to its new home in the Grant... International Bank Vault. Experts place the value of the diamond collection at $10 million. This amount, however, represents only a fraction of Grant's vast fortune. What do you think of Mr. Grant now, Mr. Carson? I gotta go show this to Kate so she'll stop worrying about this guy. Hey, Kate, wait till you see this picture of our boy, Irby Grant. Our boy? Kate, it takes a big man to admit he was wrong. I've never been this big a man before. Well, I guess Herbie's as wealthy as he says he is. Maybe now you'll stop calling him a phony. Well, I just wanted to make sure my favorite niece wasn't being took in by some fortune hunter. <laughs> you know what's in my bank account. There isn't much danger of that. Well, it's always good to make sure. Now we can relax knowing it's all over but the dull formalities. <laughs> what dull formalities? Well, he's proposing. You accept him. Whoa, Uncle Joe, back up. I like Herbie Grant very much, but let's not turn a friendly homecoming into a flaming romance. Kate, after 30 years, you don't think he just happened to be in the neighborhood. Uh, Uncle Joe, would you stop fanning the flames where there's no fire? Look, Kate, to them tycoons, time is money. And they don't go around squandering neither. Why well, figure Herbie Grant makes so much money that if he dropped a $10 bill, it'd cost him $20 worth of his time to pick it up. I never want to be that rich. Oh, and speaking of Herbie, he likes his supper on time. So don't you and Orville keep him waiting at the table. Oh, well, me and Orville's got some more stuff to clean out of the upstairs room. I tell you, we'll we just take a sandwich to munch on while we're working. Guess you and Herbie will have to eat together alone. Well, that's how things work out sometimes, Kate. All right, Uncle Joe. I'm perfectly willing to be swept off my feet, but, um, please... Let Herbie handle the broom. Well, good evening, Herb. 
Good evening, Joe. How are you this evening? Fine, fine. Just, just come over here and sit down and relax. Kate will have supper ready in a little while. Well, thanks, but uh, why the sudden change in attitude? What do you mean? Oh, come on, Joe. You haven't been overly polite before this. Oh. <laughs> Finally caught on to the rib, huh? What rib? Well, I do this to strangers all the time. Find out if they got a sense of humor. Are you sure you don't dislike me? Dislike you? Well, that's ridiculous. I never met a millionaire I didn't like. <laughs> oh, Herbie, you ready for supper? Indeed I am. May I take your arm? As long as I have it with me, why not? <laughs> important to you, isn't it, Herb? Well, it's the only thing I've learned to do well. I uh, could learn to enjoy other things, like sitting here with you. Kate, I have a great interest in you. At what percent? <laughs> Very good, Kate. Your wit is sharp and to the point. I know we can hit it off together. Oh, I don't know, Herb. I really don't know. We will. All it requires is a little patience and understanding on both our parts. <laughs> Cannonball stopping. That means somebody's getting off. I'll go get rid of them. Can't have any noisy customers up here messing things up right now. <laughs> Brings the shade your ass this time. Just remembered what brought you here. Where's the confidence man you told me about, Joe? Confidence man? What do you mean? The one you phoned me about. Or is getting me all the way out here this time of night your idea is some kind of a joke? Joke? Joke, I don't joke with you, Sheriff. Not with your temper. Or, or I mean, you're my favorite lawman. Well, why don't you come back in the morning and put the pitch on him? Good night, Sheriff. Uh, don't be ridiculous, Joe. I'm taking him in tonight. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Don't go in there. You'll spoil everything. What? What's the matter? Is he holding somebody as a hostage? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Why don't you go and get reinforcements and come back in the morning? I don't need them. I'll grab this joker by myself. No, no, Sheriff. Hold it. Wait, Sheriff. No, wait. Now, where is he, Joe? Oh, who's this rat holding as hostage? So the fellow said, that's not like me. That's like my sister. Oh, no. Where'd you get that one? It's Kate, isn't it, Joe? That's why you ain't making any sense, ain't it, Joe? Uh, yeah. Well, it's, uh, uh, stand back. I'm going in after him. No, please, Sheriff. Don't go in there. You don't know what you're doing. Kate's okay, honest. Please, the guy ain't in there. Uh, then where is he? Well, that's the last of it. I've cleaned out every room in the place. There's your man, Sheriff. This kid. Yeah, what's going on? All right, fella, the jig's up. Now tell the Sheriff your name. What did you say it was? Babyface what? Babyface? Mr. Carson, I've been shaving for two years now. Yeah, you're damn right you have. You've been shaving and fleecing and taking the poor, unsuspecting public around here. Now you go along quietly with the Sheriff. Mr. Carson, what are you trying to do to me? Uh, just a second, Joe. Ain't you one of the Miggs kids? Yeah, yeah, that's me. I'm one of the Miggs kids. Yeah, yeah, that's the name, Miggs. Babyface Miggs. I'll take him away, Sheriff, and the quicker and the quieter, the better. I don't want to wake up the guests. Well, you've done it again, Sheriff. Wrapped up another case. Tell me how the trial comes out. Well, so long, Sheriff. Good luck, Babyface. Uh, just a minute, Joe. Yeah, stop calling me Babyface. I know this kid. Now, I don't know what kind of nonsense you're up to, but I'm going to go in there and talk to Kate and find out. No, please, Sheriff. Please don't go in there right now. Herbie ought to be getting to the proposing part. You'll spoil everything. Now, what are you talking about? All my life, I've been wanting to marry into money. I may never get another chance. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that Kate's in there with a gentleman friend? That's right, Sheriff, so please don't disturb him. You know, having dinner by candlelight, romance, money, you understand? Yeah. All right, Joe, I won't bother him. Come along. Gee, thanks, Sheriff. Sorry about the little mix-up. Uh, that's perfectly all right. Just one of those things. Come along. Uh, you sure been a good sport, Sheriff. Thanks. Come along. Sheriff. Yes, Joe? Hey, Sheriff, why do you keep saying... Come along. Because for putting me through all this, I'm going to let you spend this night down in my jail. Josh. <laughs> You're going to jail. Very funny, baby face. Well, let's go, Joe. Now, please, don't put me in the hooskow, Sheriff. I ain't never been booked before in my life. No kidding. Well, let's go. Oh, please, please. I'd rather die than bring disgrace to my good name, to Kate, to the girls. Here I am. <laughs> 
Deputy Sheriff Orville. Well, Joe, where's that handsome, dashing, debonair man about town? Well, I, I'm sorry, Mabel, but it's just another case of me getting mixed up a little. Oh, sure. So you must be talking about the fella in there having dinner with Kate. Oh, well, I hate to interrupt Kate, but I'm just dying to see that romantic rascal who thinks I'm just his type. <laughs> Gangway. No, 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 wait a minute, Mabel. Wait a minute. The fella in there ain't the one that's crazy about you. Now, you run along home. I'll see if you get a meeting later. In a pig's eye, I didn't get a $4 hairdo and all done up grand to blow the whole evening. I'm not leaving this place until I meet Mr. X. Mabel. <laughs> all right, Mabel. Now, you have to go to know sooner or later who this Mr. X is. It's me. You. You? You've got to be kidding. Why, you're old enough to be my father. Age ain't everything. A fella can be young at heart because a certain person made him that way. Gee, Joe. Uh, why didn't you ever tell me this before? Well, I was afraid you just wasn't interested in men. That's why I made up this little game. Draw you out in the open. Well, gee, Joe, I had no idea. You see, I've always sort of looked on you like a, well, an older brother. Well, well, not really an older brother. Uh, more like a big brother. Well, at least that's some kind of affection. I'll settle for that. <laughs> oh, no, you won't, Josie doll. Now that everything's out in the open, we'll have none of that brother and sister stuff. We're going to get started right and let the whole world know how we feel about each other. Kiss me. You romantic devil, you. No, 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 no. Back up, Mabel. Back up. Some other time. Some other time. Uncle Joe, what? <laughs> Mabel, what are you doing here? It's Sheriff Braxdale. Well, never mind them, Kate. Give us the good news. When's the wedding date? What wedding date? Well, yours and Herbie's. Herbie and I didn't set any wedding date, and we're not going to. Is that on the level, Herbie? Completely. As a matter of fact, we were just talking about what different worlds we live in. And we were joking about what a marriage between the two of us would be like. You were joking about it, Kate? Yes, Uncle Joe. You got a poor sense of humor. It's downright poverty stricken. Thank you. More coffee, Herbie? I'd love to. Night, folks. What do you say, doll face? Let's go for a moonlight walk. Well, I'd love to, Mabel, but the, the, the sheriff here has just arrested me. He's taking me into jail immediately. Oh, uh, forget about it, Joe. I'll do no such thing. The sheriff doesn't think it's important, so let's drop the whole thing and let's go for that moonlight walk. Oh, I'm sorry, Mabel. I got it coming. Sheriff, Sheriff, do your duty. Put me in jail. Lock me up. <laughs> Good night, Mabel. Good night. Good night, Joe. Have fun. <laughs> Wait, Sheriff. I'll walk down to the train with you. Great. Now for that moonlight walk. Don't you... Sheriff, come back. I want to pay my debt to society. Come back, Sheriff. Walk me up. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.